shepherded the flock. In one month, I got rid of the three shepherds. The flock tested me, and I grew weary of them, and said, I will not be your shepherd. Dying, let the dying die. Let the perishing perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. Then I took my staff called favor and broke it, invoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. It was revoked on that day, and so the oppressed of the flock were watching me. Knew it was the word of. I told them, "If you think it best, give me my pay. But if not, keep it." They paid me thirty pieces of silver, and the Lord said to me, "Throw it to the porter, the handsome prize at which they valued me." So I took the thirty pieces of silver and threw them to the porter at the house of the Lord. Then I broke my second staff called union, breaking the family bond between Judah and Israel. Then the Lord said to me, take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd, for I am going to raise up a shepherd over the land who will not care for the lost or seek the young or heal the injured or feel the, feed the healthy, but will eat the meat of the choice sheep, tearing off their hooves. Verse 17. Woe to the worthless shepherd who deserted the flock. May the sword strike his arm and his right eye. May his arm be completely withered. His right eye to find it. Draw some of you like the end part of that chapter. You want to pray for certain people, certain groups who you think do not deserve the blessing of God. That's not how God operates these days. 
this passage we have read, I want to draw your attention to something that I see. And if you look at it like we always would tell ourselves that whatever we can see from scripture and apply to our spiritual lives, we can also apply to our physical lives. If we can take the principles from scripture, and that's why the Bible is a complete book, we can apply it to our spiritual journey, but we can also apply it to our day-to-day lives, to our businesses, to the way we live in our homes, to our family life. And so what I want to talk to you this morning is don't settle for the perceived normal. I'll, I'll say that again. Don't settle for the perceived normal. Don't settle for the perceived normal. Don't settle for the perceived normal. And and if you look at the passage of scripture that we have read, it says in verse 11, it was revoked on that day. And to the oppressed of the flock who were watching, who were watching me, it was known, it was the, it was known, who were watching me knew it was the word of the Lord. So they knew it was the word of the Lord, but somewhere along the line they didn't enjoy it there's a saying that we all repeat and there's a side of it that sometimes we don't repeat very often and the saying is what i'm sure if i say it you can complete it for me practice makes again practice makes but the key question is what are you practicing if practice makes perfect what actually are you practicing For not only does practice makes perfect, but practice makes permanent. Because the more you practice, the more you do it, the more you repeat it, it becomes permanent so that you can do it without thinking because you are so used to it. For every child of God, the perceived normal, what is supposed to be normal, are those things that gratify the flesh. That is our nature, the the, the birth that we had and the things that we are used to. They are perceived as normal, what we do normally as human beings. But as a Christian, they are not normal. So the perceived normal is against what God has called us to be. God has called us to a life that bears fruit, the fruit of the spirit. That should be our normal. So in actuality, what the world will call normal is abnormal to us. And what the world will call abnormal is normal to us. And so the question is, what are you practicing? Are you settling for the perceived normal of the world? Or are you going for what is to be the normal of the Christian life. And many a times we get carried away and want to settle for the perceived normal of the world because there's less pressure there. There's less opposition there. There is less attack there. There appears to be more comfort there because the perceived normal is against the spiritual life. A life that God has called us to live, knowing that it is not the normal for us, is a life that we live in his power, not in our power. It's a life that we live empowered by the Holy Spirit of God. So Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says, So I say, walk by the Spirit. Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. I like that end part of Galatians chapter 5 verse 17. So that you don't do whatever you want because what you want is the normal for the flesh. But what God wants is his normal. But we are usually carried away by the normal of the flesh. And so this morning my assignment is to tell you don't settle as a child of God for the perceived normal. Never settle for what the world sees as this is normal if it goes against what God says. Always pursue what is seen as the abnormal because the perceived normal is never in line with what God has said. Amen. Israel back to our text, started practicing the things that their neighbors were doing. Things that they were warned against and they had gotten so used to these things and these things became normal. 
Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 4 says, Do not be like your ancestors, to whom the earlier prophets proclaimed, Zechariah 1, 4. This is what the Lord Almighty says, Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. Turn from your evil ways and your evil practices. But they would not listen or pay attention to me, declares the Lord. So they got to a point where the evil ways and evil practices that they had seen from the neighbors around them became normal for them and they were comfortable that even when God spoke to them, like he's speaking to some today, they felt, no, we don't need this abnormal from the flesh we want to be normal with other people we want to be accepted we want to be seen not to be different God didn't call us to be seen not to be different he called us to be different and to stay different is not in your power it's in your submission to the power of the Holy Spirit so they kept on practicing what was wrong and appeared to have settled for it and it was not good for them the earlier verses of this passage, chapter 11, that we are in, we saw that issues were, came up because of the leaders that they had during that time. Their leaders had also settled for the perceived normal. And so their lives were not the same anymore. But let's see what now was happening as they settled for the perceived normal. And what lessons we can draw for ourselves our spiritual walk with God and even our lives and the things that we do the first thing we see is between verse 7 and verse 9 that if you try to settle for the perceived normal it blows you from the available blessings it blows your vision it, it, it reduces your sight as it were of seeing what God has made available look at what the Bible says in the state that they were in in the perceived normal that they were in in, God knew that they didn't have leaders they didn't have a shepherd so he sent the prophet of God to go and be their shepherd and look at verse 7 he said I went and I shepherded the flock marked for slaughter particularly the oppressed of the flock so he went to carry out the assignment and he went to two staffs favor and unity he did what he needed to do. In one month, he got rid of three shepherds who nobody's really sure it's left open. Some think it's, they are some kings of Israel. Some think that it was the prophet, the priest, and the teachers that they were, they were gotten rid of. Nobody's sure. But what we're sure of is that there were three significant people that Zechariah moved out of business because they too had settled for the perceived norm. But then, look at what he says. In one month, he did away with three of them. But what happened? The flock detested. They were okay where they were. They were comfortable where they were. They wanted to, they wanted to continue. And because he had an assignment, the verse, the verse tells us that, and I grew weary of them. And I said, I will not be your shepherd anymore. Let the dying die. Because I came as a shepherd to give you life. Let the dying die. And let those who are marked out to perish, let them perish. Let those who are left eat one another's flesh. What a bad situation. Why? Because he failed to see the blessing. The blessing that they came with, that the shepherd came with, and they, 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 they failed to see. Why would you detest one that has come to make your life better? Why will you detest one that has come to make your life better? Why would you be angry? Why would you not want to associate with somebody that has come to make your life better? Because most times we think that what we have now is better than what the person is giving to us. They thought that the God that they were serving now, they thought that the gold and the things they were seeing now was better than what they were giving. And don't we fall into that same predicament that we think that this thing of faith and trusting God, that yes, sometimes we cannot see him. We think that the things that they are calling us to do that will dishonor God are better because most times, you can feel them, see them, and taste them. Once we can deal with those three things, our sight, our taste, and our touch, it becomes a problem. And when we deal with God, Hebrews tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because when you come to him, you must believe that he exists because you can go and touch God but if you know him you can see him in the rising of the sun 
If you know him, you can see him in the skies. If you know, you can see him in the beds and birds, how he provides for them. If you know, you can see him every morning in your life that when you wake up, you know it's not in your capacity. It is grace that made it possible. Came with two things. Favor and unity. Favor and unity. God had sent a shepherd that came that they would enjoy beyond what they knew or what they expected because that favor was really unmerited favor that he chose them they were they didn't do anything he chose them and he wanted them to be united not only did he bring favor and unity but he got, got rid of shepherds that were deceiving them but they thought it was normal. Wealth of life. They thought it was normal. The things that they were doing, they thought it was normal. The life that they were living that wasn't glorifying God, they thought it was normal. That, that if nothing has happened, then it's okay. But God is saying, no, there is more if you will deny the flesh and come to me. Their vision was blurred to see the blessings that they had. And brothers and sisters, dear friends, never allow the perceived normal blow you from seeing the blessing God has for you. Never allow the perceived normal that you think, oh yes, this is normal, this is okay. Never it, never allow it blow your vision to see what God has for you because God has so much for us. But sometimes we are distracted by the things we think are normal. And you know, in your everyday life, you know that if you do any form of business, if you do not see beyond the normal in present day world and see how technology is moving, your business will get obsolete. Is that not so? You, you think you're okay. It's normal. I've been doing it. In fact, my grandfather did it, handed it to me. I've done it done, and, and now I'm, I'm enjoying it. But hey, the world has moved in every sphere of life but there are people who think that if we change the status quo we would break the whole building it's not breaking, you're not reinventing the wheel you're only improving what is already running and so with our spiritual life God has more to give us but we're carried away by these things that are passing away and you know they're very attractive is that not so? Oh yeah, they're very attractive. We try to hide under a cloak of spirituality and think that we don't like them. Come on, be truthful to yourself. You know you like them. Who doesn't like good money? I mean, when you drive around Asokoro, you know, it, it depends on who you are driving. You drive some people and if they don't explain to you, you just, how can, look at these kind of houses. Drop them there and see. I know that some of them are, I mean, wonder whether it's half of the, half of the guy's village that is living in the house when you see the size but who doesn't like just this ambience of just being around here who actually would have what they can afford and then take themselves and go and stay forgive me if you are from that place I don't mean any harm but I know you want to leave and go and stay in Papi you want to leave don't you you, you, you want to come out. You, 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 you want to, you, you will like those things, but as good as they are, may they not take our eyes away from the eternal blessing that God has given to us. And because they are not tangible sometimes, we are carried away by those things we think are tangible. Settle for the perceived normal. Because what the world perceives as normal is not the normal that God has for you. Like in many situations, there were, there were no middle grounds in this discussion. So they had to bear the consequences for their choices as they missed the blessings that are available to them. Look at verse 10, if you may, and verse 11 and verse 14. In verse 10, then I took my staff called favor, which was a covenant promise, and broke it. So they now lost the favor of God, revoking the covenant I had made with all the nations. It was revoked on that day. And so the oppressed of the flock who were watching me knew it was the word of God. I don't have time to talk about those guys who knew it was the word of God. But verse 14, then I broke my second staff called Union. Verse 14, breaking the family bond between Judah and Jerusalem. And if you have gone with this passage that we have been reading, this section of the book of Zechariah appears to have been a prophecy before they went into exile. 
And so when this was broken, favor was no more. The unity was broken because they decided to go with what they perceived as normal. Israel went into exile. The nation was divided. They lost favor of God. Why? Because they chose to stay and receive no. Verse 11 says there were a few who noticed that this was the because God will always have a witness in any society however bad there will always be children of God that will say this is the voice of God where they struggle is that a good number of times they are in the minority their voices are not loud and sometimes like I'm sure we all know the voice of the majority is not usually the voice of God hello Nigeria <laughs> I'm sure we all know now the doubt now that most times the voice of the majority is not as they say the voice of God the shouting majority may lead us astray the shouting majority wants us to change the values we have the shouting majority usually don't want to glorify God because they don't understand that is their normal you are a child of God and the perceived normal most contrary with scripture but they are the loudest they control the news media they control the print media they control the key avenues of resources and so they have the wealth to shout and sometimes we are the minority oh I pray God gives you strength that as small as they think we are may we know that he that is on our side is greater than he who is on their side that we will know that however loud they shout the shout of God when he shouts will, will, will overshadow their own voice may we know like David that when the army of God has been defiled battle that has been called and no one defiles the army of the living God and survive and we know that so they stayed and they missed the favor of God they missed the unity why because when you settle for the perceived normal it blows your vision it blows your vision to the available blessing the second thing is we see in verse 12 let me read verse 12 because verse 12 has interesting poetry around this I told them if you think it best give me my pay but if not keep it so they paid me how much 30 pieces of silver and the Lord said to me throw it to the porter the handsome prize at which they valued me so I took the 30 pieces of silver and threw them to the porter at the house of God the handsome prize the, 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 the wonderful prize the good prize that they valued but you see this prize that they valued was actually the prize for a slave Exodus chapter 21 and verse 32 talks about the fact that in Exodus 21 32 if a bull gores a male or female slave the owner must pay 30 shekels of silver to the master of the slave and the bull is to be stoned to death 30 pieces of silver that's where we have our 30 pieces of silver coming from in Jewish culture God established to them that 30 pieces of silver is the price for a slave that is injured by bull so this is the shepherd of God coming and they prized him as a slave and in very sarcastic language he says the handsome prize Exodus 21 32 tells us how handsome that prize is he says this is my worth what, what is the worth of the shepherd what is the worth of the leader is worth price of a slave because when you settle for the perceived normal you undervalue blessing you undervalue blessing that the blessing of God you undervalue it you undervalue grace you undervalue his love you undervalue his provision you think it is in your power because you did that business you carried out that contract and it went well the deal was good they called you but hello why did they call you you think you are the most qualified you think you are the most qualified why do you think you completed it do you think because your life 
it's in your hands or it was God's grace that kept you oh yeah they gave you that job you had straight A's you came out with a two one and they gave you that job brother sister there are people that could do better that don't have that job God blessed them shepherd that was going to bring them out of where they were but because they were normally enjoying the perceived normal they undervalued the blessing of God they valued the shepherd as a slave and he, he, he told them the price in fact this even gets more interesting because there's a repeat of this value now that you know how much they valued Matthew chapter 26 verse 14 and 16 will ring a bell now Matthew chapter 26 then one of the twelve one called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priest and asked what are you willing to give me if I deliver him over to you so they counted out how much? 30 pieces of silver. From then on, Judas watched out for an opportunity and him. <laughs> In Matthew chapter 26, verse 14, they counted out 30 pieces of silver. Who counted it out? The Jewish authorities. The chief priests counted out. And you see, the chief priest knew the law. So the chief priest knew the prize slave they undervalued the master they undervalued who they had to the degree that you know it's the same people that said is it not this Jesus and, 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 and Jesus says a prophet has no value is, is it not this Jesus this great man that was performing the, that was performing miracles they undervalued the blessing that was before them I don't even know who undervalued it more between the chief priest and Judas. Because Judas had literally seen miracles. Judas had literally seen the power of God. But Judas was willing to collect the prize of a slave for the master. You know, in Judas' time, maybe this was the catch. Because in Judas' time, 30 pieces of silver was worth 120 denaries. And one denary was paid for one day's work. So Judas collected money for 120 days' work. Price of exchanging his master. You know why? Because the Bible tells us that the Pharisees were very okay with the normal. They settled for the perceived normal. And Jesus, who is the good shepherd, was as we say in our times, he was seriously shaking this table. This table he was shaking was very serious. Look at John chapter 11, if you may. John chapter 11, picking at verse 45. John eleven forty-five. 45, Jesus has brought Lazarus back to life. And in verse 45 of John 11, the Bible says, Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary, and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. But some of them went to the Pharisees and told them what Jesus had done. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees called a meeting of the Sanhedrin. What are we accomplishing? They asked. Here is this man performing many signs. Now look at verse 48 of John 11. If we let him go on like this, everyone will believe him. Is that a bad thing? And then, what will happen? The Romans will come and take away both our temple and our nation. So they were comfortable with the rule of Rome that if everybody turns against Rome, they will take over their temple. So don't rock this boat. Don't shake this table. Who is this young man who will not listen to anybody? What will it cost us to take this man? And they got somebody in Judas and they exchanged the master prize. Well, we may not be exchanging him for the price of a slave, but we may be exchanging him for things that don't have eternal value. We may not be exchanging him for the price of a slave, but we may be exchanging him for money. We're exchanging him using our bodies wrongly. 
We may be exchanging him in doing things that we know are wrong. Perceived normal will always undervalue the blessing of the real normal. Don't be deceived. And like I say, if you look at it even in our physical life and our, and our work, you find out that when you tell people that there are new grounds you can conquer, there are new heights you can reach, risk takers will go and take the risk and grow. But those who are comfortable with the norm, leave me as I am. I know where I came from. I know where I came from. God has done more than enough for me. But brother, sister, there is more we can do. This your business has more potential. See, see. Even this one. You don't even know how I prayed and fasted. Just leave me as I am. But you can expand. I'm expanding nowhere. The Abuja location, ba. But you can go online. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. Online. That thing is where they are just doing evil there. Evil. Just I no no. Just put the picture. No. Don't. I, see, I don't, I'm not even online. Just even change your phone so you can communicate and share to others. Sure, they can call me. I can send text. It's okay. On the value, the greater things God wants to do. In our spiritual lives, that's what God is saying. That when we want to stay with the things that don't bring honor to God, we undervalue the blessing that God gives to us. Last thing we see is sad. Not only do we undervalue the blessings when we stay with the perceived normal, not only does it blur our vision to the available blessing, but it opens the door for oppression. It opens the door for oppression. So the Bible says in verse 15, Then the Lord said to me, Take again the equipment of a foolish shepherd, for I am going to raise up a shepherd over the land who will not care for the lost, or seek the young, or heal the injured, or feed the healthy. Or we eat the meat of the choice sheep is the last part that makes it very bad. You know what it says? Tearing off their hooves. The idea is that they've eaten everything and even the hooves, they're eating everything. There's nothing left. Nothing. They're finishing everything. And look at the kind of shepherds they're going to have. Shepherds that don't care for the lost. Shepherds that don't seek the young. Shepherds are not concerned about the healing of the injured. Shepherds are not concerned about the feeding and the health of the sheep. They will eat everything. Not what they had. See what they were now getting. So note what they had. The kind of shepherd that God gave to them. The shepherd that came, even if they missed everything, he came with two things. He came with favor and he came with unity. But what did they get? They got oppressors. It opened the door for them to be oppressed because they were comfortable with the new normal. And once we stay on the side of the perceived normal, Satan has an opportunity to hold us captive in his camp. Satan has an opportunity to terrorize us, as it were, and bother our minds and bother our lives because we have opened the door. Because we didn't value the blessings we have. We didn't value things that God has given to us. So God himself says, well, let me give them a taste of what they are looking for. Enjoy it. Go. 70 years of captivity. Go. Enjoy it. Why? Shepherd was given to them. See normal was pursued for what God was providing for them. As I come to a close this morning, this world of continuous uncertainties and many voices calling us what appears to be normal life. We not lose sight of the real shepherd. As they lost sight because they were comfortable where they were and viewing what they had, they lost sight of the real shepherd. May we not lose sight of the shepherd. So many voices, and if I want to split this church now with what is happening, it's just to ask who is for I'll split this church into two right now. Because however spiritual people are, they will be for and against. Like pastor that I like and I listen to, Tony Evans said, 
Whatever side you are on, none of them has the authority of the scripture. Whatever side you are on, none of them have the purity of the scripture. Whatever side you are on, none of those parties gives the blessing that the scripture gives. All of them have devilish part of them. But there's a place of peace and joy. And that every time you go to support anybody, ask yourself, is the kingdom glorified? Not is my party glorified? No, there's a party you belong to for eternity. The kingdom of God is the kingdom glorified. Is the kingdom made manifest on earth? Or is it man? And if the children of God are truly guided by the kingdom, this world will be a better place. I assure you that we look at all the sides, even in our country, look at all the sides and ask, where does this fit into the kingdom? Their justice is their righteousness, or is it a pursuit of the perceived norm? Is, 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 is it a pursuit? No. Listen to somebody and he was talking about let's get back to the free wall. This is Nigeria now. The free wall. I like that word. Because the free wall connotes where you have no particular right over certain choices of your life. Today in the free world we are I don't know whether the right words to use is blessed. In one of the elections that was done in America, in the free world, we now have the first transgender senator. Welcome to the free world. Welcome to the free world. Where in the free world, some people are trying to guard you from talking and speaking what your convictions are. Because in the free world, you don't say certain things about certain people. The whole world will go ablaze. But when they talk certain things about my Lord and Savior, nobody goes ablaze. Because in the free world, my Lord and Savior must be criticized, must be put down. Others will be exalted. That's not the kind of free world I want. Because the perceived normal, that's the free world. The world where life is precious and given by God in his word. There's a savior named Jesus who guides us. And he should be guide and understand. I end in John chapter 10 verse 11 and verse 14. John chapter 10 verse 11 and verse 14 it says John 10 11 14 I am the good shepherd the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, verse 14. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. If you know him, you will live for him. If you know him, life will project him. If you know him, then you can testify like Roman says because his spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are his children. If you know him, then he has set an example of a sacrificial life. He laid his life down. So there's an example of sacrifice. That's Christian normal. My prayer that all of us who call ourselves children of God May we pursue the Christian normal and not the perceived normal. That the perceived normal will not be the ones that will hold us, but our joy will be to pursue the normal that God gives us in his word. In that place, there will be persecution, but there's no doubt in my mind because the Bible says so, and there are records of it that there will be victory. There will be down times, but there's no doubt in my mind that we'll come out on top happier than we were before. There will be times when we'll shed tears, but my Bible reminds me that weeping will last for the night. But what happens? Joy must come in the morning. That's the promise I have from the normal of God. Pray you pursue that normal. Receive now. Dear God in heaven, thank you for your word. Forgive us for every time we've turned our backs to pursue the perceived normal. Pray for yourself this morning. Why is your walk with me? Why is your walk?
have a thirst after the living. Pursue him. When you stumble, you don't stay there in comfort. It's more. Ask I won't ask you to stand. I won't ask you to raise your hand. If you are convicted about your life, first thing is you deal with it with God. I advise you to seek for help for others to pray. But if there's no conviction, no, you can be moved by your emotions. That's not what we're pursuing. I want you to be convicted by the Spirit. Ask God to help him. Call him. Cry to him. The perceived normal. Oh, everybody's doing it. No, you're not everybody. You are saved child of God. There are things children of God don't do. You name that thing that's held. You don't know Jesus as Lord of your life. You are living the perceived name. You don't have the capacity. You don't have the capacity how the Holy Spirit to live outside the perceived norm. Don't. It's comforting your heart this morning. Pray. God of my life, accept you to be my Savior. Take my life. Transform it. Pray that prayer. Accepted Jesus as Lord of the Spirit will dwell in you. Faithful God, stand on the praise of your word that has never failed. What word has been sent out? It will accomplish in the life and lives of many. The glory I've done is to present what you said. What your spirit does is to convict hearts that no man can do. Do it. Do it, O God. Do it in our midst, O God. Conviction that leads to righteousness. Godly repentance that leads to righteousness. Do it in our midst, O God. Lives will be changed. Homes will be built. Businesses will be built on the pursuit of the normal that God has said. Now, Spirit of the living God, you alone can do what you alone can do and do it again. That will have testimonies to your people. In Jesus' victorious name. Amen.
Thank you. Otherwise, Jinjin, you people swag, I thank you. Thank God that uh, I've finished the sermon. I want to places to share God's word. Dancing and dancing and dancing. Then you start to sleep. Then somebody says, the devil is making them sleep. There's no devil. Dance well, tired. And you sleep well. Then also, sometimes when I see people dancing in church before I preach, God, oh, just help me. Again, good morning. Welcome to church. I think we've had a wonderful time in God. I want to welcome those who are worshiping us again this time. We have their names here. Just call their name. Then we'll take the few pieces that we have just to draw your attention to them. Just to draw your attention that we have. And then we'll close. Right? First of all, we have Paul Priscilla. If I call you wherever you are, just stand up. Somebody will direct you where to go and um, they will meet you too. So Paul Priscilla, thank you very much for coming. Still not. Okay. Right, we have Jadida Lawrence. Jadida Lawrence. Thank you to your family member that invited you. Jadida Lawrence. We also have Gaia Judith. Gaia Judith, thank you very much for visiting us this morning. We also have Samson Danjuma. Samson Danjuma. Thank you very much for visiting us this morning, Samson. Thank you for coming and thanks to your friend who invited you. We have Fatherson Gift Danladi. Thank your auntie for who that is, but thank you for inviting Fatherson Gift Danladi. Thank you for visiting us today. We have Martha Andrew. Martha Andrew. Thank you for visiting us this morning, Martha Andrew. And we have Andrew Morick. Andrew. That daughter, if I, mother and son, Thank you for visiting us. All right. Thank you for coming and um, to attend to you briefly and then. All right, a few notices. Um, we'll be announcing the program that comes up on Saturday. Uh, they decided to choose Saturday. Saturday is a special day for me. So I, I, I'm not sure I'll be able to try. But Saturday, they're having um, the program for young people and um, I'm told that somebody has registered for five people so if you want to be a part of the program and you have problem with registering see our brother pastor joseph he'll be able to help you out so there are uh, five people five young people who want to attend the program uh, at uh, equa central area on saturday see him and um, um, they'll be able to in tell you what the program is about. Yes. Sure. Amplify. Yeah, that's the program. Amplify. All right. So, um, so young people leading the course, young people sharing their faith with everyone. So please try and um, attend. It's organized by Word of Life. Good that you go there if you're a young person. So if registration is your problem, please talk to him and we'll be able to get you to go. All right. So there's space for five people. So I'm sure the first five who come will have space. All right, please take your bulletins if you don't mind. I'm sure you have one and turn to the center page. Just open it. Just open the middle. You would see all the things there. First are the notices. Please take note of them. We have weddings coming up. Pray for them. There are others whose cards are not yet out. I know two others whose cards are not yet out yet, all in December. So let's pray for them and uh, we would Call them forward as they are around. Our sister Anna is in Lagos. Uh, our brother Jonathan is one whose uh, brother, our sister Blessing, is going to be here. So um, these two here, uh, yesterday, our brother Ben got married, so we got one. And uh, our brother Jonathan. Jonathan here? Yeah, there you are. Stand up, please. And you can remove your mask. and All those people that have finished NYC, I don't want to see you around. Your face is already... <laughs> so Jonathan Jonathan gets married to our sister blessing our sister blessing is um, the state right now so he's going to go there on the 26th of December there are two others when we get the cards we'll... 
may be seated, my brother, as we continue to pray for you. Uh, please, let's continue to pray for one another. Thanksgiving 29, the second announcement is also important. If you've been attending church here and you haven't registered, please get the form. We want to know you and we want you to join a group. Join a place of service. It's through the form. You will see the list in the bulletin, but it's through the form you can indicate which one you want to join. All right? And um, we want people, young people especially, um, hopefully by Saturday, but we'll clarify on your, your platform so that we can come and wash this place. We can get it cleaner than this. I, the, the work is over, so we want to come and wash it and set everything up uh, better. All right? So, young people, let's prepare for this. We'll come and do this work together and supporting the ushers also and get this place uh, ready. We want to also thank our men, men fellowship. I, you know, I don't, I think Dr. Jerry can help me. Mazan, what they call that? Yeah, yeah, you see, they're all shouting now. They've done the tiling, so they're shouting. Mazan Kore, thank you very much to all our men. Thank you for this that you have done. Thank you very much. We are very, very grateful. Uh, just a few things. That's why they didn't do the other two rooms, but that will be sorted out. The other single room is done, and one other room at the back is done. There's some work that needs to be done in the other, so that's what the, that will put it done. But we'll get those two rooms done, but every other thing concerning tiling by God's grace has been completed. And we thank God for that. Um, like our elder prayed this morning, we'll do this one also. Do the other things. Then we'll rest, then we'll face the big one. It's big for us. We won't deceive ourselves. Is that also? So it's big for us now. But is it big for God? Even this one was big for us. Was it big for God? Totally. Together. Amen. Let's get ready as we get along. So, and I we always leave the door is open. If you want to do anything, you want to give somebody brought us, well, you call it small, but I don't think it's small. Somebody brought a mop and donated to the church that since I've seen tiles, you need mop and brought one mop. Is that not something? It's contribution to the work of God. There's always something to be done if you want to do. So, please, let's always find something. All right, the last thing, please check those birthdays. You know, it's a very important month. If you share birthday with Pastor, you know that we'll shout it very well. Our mommy will smile. Well, all it's our month, so it's our it's our shiny time. When you share with Pastor, the announcement is free. Is that also? Yes. Joy, Zachariah, Pastor, Stephanie. So Saturday, in this week, you know, we are the ones enjoying. This is the best month to be born. If you debate with me, if you think it's not so see me, I'll explain to you why. See me now. We'll discuss how this November is the time to arrive. As I just arrive, we start Christmas. Apart from that, there are many other things. December, where you come and reduce our Christmas food. You no. Know. All right, let's stand on our feet together as we pray. We are going to take a closing hymn. Um, I know there's going to be a challenge with the tune, so be patient and follow them. It's not a long song. I know some tunes are popular, some are not, but they will lead us uh, with the closing hymn. So just be. Patient. And you know, my brother and our sister, they are have, they have more advanced in choir than us, so just be patient with them. Let's stand on our feet as we pray, then after that, we'll take the close. I'll ask our brother Joseph to pray for us, and then I'll. Let's pray together. So we're good. Uh, this morning. This week, Lord, we set from the kingdom. It's in our actions, thinking, set from the kingdom. Jesus, we ask that you need to bless us and for all who are celebrating birthdays this week, mark a name of Jesus and ask in Jesus name may the Lord bless you may the Lord keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you may the Lord be gracious unto you and lift his countenance of peace around you may you enjoy the protection that the Lord provides that your going out will be blessed and your coming in will be blessed may you enjoy the healing that God gives that your bodies will be touched your mind will be touched with the healing power of God Almighty May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Thank you. We'll take this hymn and then we'll close. I think we'll take the first and the last. I think the stands us. All right? And then we'll...
Amen. Just the end. 